Right, so here we go. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, show some magic uh, related to crypto. Okay, so here's here's my, my magic wand. And we're going to do some, some tricks related to crypto. You can try the tricks yourself. Uh, but they're all related to some sort of weakness uh, with inside our encryption. So we're going to look at uh, asymmetric and symmetric encryption and we'll look at some of the little flaws and techniques that we can actually use that uh, that are often used to, to be able to crack crypto. Okay, so we have uh, Bob and we have Alice and they're going to help us with our tricks. And we have Eve the Magician, okay? So Eve is going to amaze us with some uh, some little magical tricks that are involved with crypto. Okay, so before we start, or let's have a look at some some of the basic principles behind what we're going to actually have a look at. So one of the core things that uh, we have with inside the core of security on the internet is the RSA public key asymmetric method, asymmetric encryption method. For that, we have two prime numbers, P and Q. Those are you normally quite large numbers. So if we take the value of 3 and 11, we get the value of N, or our modulus of 33. And this is the core of security that we have. If it's possible to factorize uh, this number here into the prime numbers, then we've really cracked uh, uh, RSA. And the reason for that is that we can calculate what's called the value of phi. So phi is p minus 1 times q minus 1. In this case, it's 2 times 10 or 20. So this is the only little bit that we have to make a, a choice of something. What we need to make sure is our encryption key or E value does not share a common factor with our phi value. So 20 factorizes to 2, 4, 5, 10 and so on. So we can't actually choose any of those values, so let's choose the value of 3. Okay, uh, we typically call this the GCD or the greatest common denominator between phi and E is 1. And that's our first key, our first key is 3 and 33, and that's our E and our N number, the modulus. So we send that to anybody who wants to encrypt data for us. The next thing we must do is multiply our D value, which is our description key, times E, and we take the mod of phi, and that should be 1. So mod is the remainder of a, of a value uh, when, we, when we divide. So we can try 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, doesn't work. But when we get to 7 for a value of D, then that works, because that becomes 21, mod 20 equals 1. So our decryption key in this case is 733. Okay, so our encryption for our magic, our, our encryption is 3 and 33, and our decryption is 7 and 33. If someone encrypts with 3 and 33, then we should be able to decrypt with 7 and 33. Okay, so that's our two keys that we have, an encryption key, our public key. That's the key that uh, we ask, we can distribute. And this becomes our decryption key, 7 and 33. So the way we create the cipher is we take the message and we raise it to the power of our encryption key. And then we take mod of the modulus, or m. So let's take an, an example of m equals 5. Then it's 5 to the power of 3. That's our 3 value there. And mod 33 gives us 26 if you do the calculation. And then when we decipher, we take that value of 26, we raise it to the power of D, and we take mod N, and there we go. The magic of Eve makes sure that uh, that deciphers. Okay, and that's the magic of RSA. Isn't it a wonderful method? And it's the method that is typically used to be able to protect our identity online. The other typical method that we have is what's called Diffie-Hellman. And Diffie-Hellman is used to create a shared common key. So at the end of it, Bob and Alice should have the same key which they can use to encrypt. And even Eve, who's watching, uh, cannot determine what the actual key is. 
Okay, so with this method, Alice generates a random value, and so does Bob. We'll call that little a and little b. So uh, Alice sends an agreed value, g, and we've also got a prime number, p. Uh, she sends a to g to the power of a mod p, and Bob sends back g to the power of b mod p. And then with the magic of uh, John Napier's logs, b to the power of a is g to the power of b to the power of a. And because of the logs, g to the b to the power of a is actually g to the a times uh, b. So it's like g to the power of 2 to the power of 3 is actually equal to g to the power of 6. On the other side, we've got a to the power of b, which is g to the g to the power of a to the power of b, and then that becomes g to the power of a b, and Bob and Alice have the same shared key. We also bring in mod p for each of the operations because these numbers are going to get quite large if, if we do it. Okay, so that's that's the two main methods that we have uh, within inside uh, our, our cryptography for uh, negotiation of a key and also for asymmetric encryption. Okay, so let's look at our first uh, piece of magic. So in the first piece of magic, what we're going to do is we're going to factorise some uh, prime numbers. So in this case, uh, the core of uh, our cryptography is the value of n. If we can factorise for p and q, the two prime numbers, then we could determine p minus 1 and q minus 1. And then after that, we've got phi. For phi, we can then go ahead and we can work out uh, the encryption keys or the decryption key from that. Okay, so so for the first one, what we're going to do is just a little bit of magic. So these these are quite small numbers that we're going to use, uh, but uh, let's see how we can uh, factorize our prime numbers. Okay, so we'll just uh, pull up this page here. So what we have uh, with uh, RSA is that we have some, we have the two prime numbers, when they multiply together they give us our modulus or n. So on this page uh, we've, we're using uh, this Python code here and what we're going to do is factorize some multiplications. So in this case 33,127 is 157 times 211. That gives us our factorization. And then we can go ahead and E, a typical value for E is 0, 01001. 0, 0, 0, 1. And these, this is the decryption key that we can use, which is 30,833. Okay, and that's just using uh, this little piece of Python code there. There's the E value that we have and this will calculate our decryption key with our n value. But we can actually go up to some very large numbers. So in this case, there we go. So for this very large value of n, here are the two prime numbers. We can factorize this. So about the limit that we can take it to is about 96 bits. So there's no way that we can get up to something like 1024 bits. So the magic trick kind of falls down, but uh, we're able to factorize some very large numbers into the, the two prime numbers which causes the, the modulus. Okay, so that's, that's our first trick. It's hardly the most amazing of tricks, but then we'll have a look at some other ones that uh, allow us to do some really smart uh, things. Okay, so let's look at really our first real trick. So with this one, what we'll do is that uh, we're going to uh, ask Bob and Alice to come up to, to the to the stage. So we'll send Bob off into a little room. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll get uh, Alice to select two prime numbers. Okay, so she likes, selects selects three and five. They're quite small ones just now, but uh, we'll just let her use those ones because they're easy to calculate. 
So she calculates the value of 15, and then she calculates the value of p minus 1 times q minus 1. Okay, that's 8. So we Bob is locked away. He can't say that. He can't uh, see what's going on. And then we ask her to be able to select uh, a, 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 a so for this, uh, pick a number, and uh, so what we need to do is to determine the uh, the f the encryption key. So the value of phi is is eight. So she just has to select uh, a number that does not share a common factor with eight. So she's selecting five in this case. Okay, so Ala. Alice has selected 5, 15 and Eve now with her magic wand actually defines that. Okay, so she's going to give uh, that to, to Bob and then we'll get Bob to think up a secret uh, message. So in this case it's just a value of 7. Okay, so all we've done up to now is we've allowed Alice to select her two prime numbers We've then allowed her to, uh, to select an encryption key and we've given the encryption key to Bob and he selected a secret message that he's going to pass. Okay, so now we'll get him to create the cipher and he does the cipher 7 to the power of 5 mod 15 gives 7. Okay, and then Eve says, oops, oh I think you've made a mistake there Bob. But Eve now passes a value of 615 to to um, to Bob and he recalculates a new cipher and then at the end of that uh, Eve then without even knowing the decryption key actually cracks it and says that the value is 7 so how did she do it? How did she manage to be able to crack that without determining the encryption key? Well, the way she did it was that she took the value of E and N and she passed that to Bob, that was Alice's encryption key. And then he did the cipher. But the second time she was sneaky, she added one on to the value of E and passed that to Bob and asked them to cipher that one too. Nobody saw it, but she uh, took the two values. Then if you divide cipher 1 by cipher 2, you get M to the power of E plus 1 and E over m to the e. And it's a bit like when you've got 5 to the power of 3 divided by 5 to the power of 2, that's equal to 5. So that one, take away that one, gives you m to the power of 1. So actually, if we take cipher 2 and it's equal to cipher 1 times the message, so all we really have to do is to divide cipher 2 by cipher 1 or find out the value of m that allows that to happen. Okay, so I think we can have a look at this example here. And there we go. Okay, so there's the message of 7. We'll take an encryption, uh, the, the value is 5, and the n value in this case is 15. When we do the cipher, it's a 7 and a 4. And then all that um, that Eve has to do is to be able to find the value which uh, makes this true. So we want C2 equal to C1 times message more than. We always bring the more than in them. When we find a value that will fit with the value of M, then we've cracked the, the code. Okay, and we can try it for different values of the message and hopefully we should always get uh, our answer back again. Okay, so in this way we can actually uh, uh, crack our values and we can make it quite large values. So in this case the E value is 1531. So 1531 and we take 1532 and there is the value of N in this case. And there's a first cipher, the second cipher. We go through the values until we find a value that will work. So I think it's cipher 2 is equal to the message times cipher 1. 
So 59 times uh, this value mod n will give us our solution. Okay, so in this way uh, Eve has actually cracked the complex cipher. Okay, so the moral of the story is uh, you should watch if uh, Eve passes uh, Alice's encryption key to Bob and then Bob uh, then receives uh, another encryption key plus one. Even though Eve doesn't actually have the decryption key, she can determine the message. So if the message is the same that Bob sends back, then Eve will be able to crack that message. Okay, so that here here is the here's the working out for it. Okay, so there's the first there's the first cipher. And there's the E value there. And then the second cipher, we just added one onto the encryption key. We then end up with uh, the cipher two here and cipher one. And then we just go around and find the value of M that actually works with seven times the message mode 15 is equal to cipher two, which is four. Okay, we can go around the loop until we actually find it. Okay, so that's our first little trick, our little magic trick there that we've got, but just by adding one onto the E key. So for the next one, what we'll have a look at is uh, when we have a we have a small message or a small value of E, and when it's much less than the modulus N. Okay, so in this trick, what happens is that uh, uh, Eve asks uh, Alice to take two large prime numbers, and then they are, and uh, she gets them to multiply them together, and we get that value. And then what we're going to do is we're going to ask Alice to pick a value uh, from, from there. Okay, so she picks uh, seven. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a single letter. Uh, so the E E value is going to be seven uh, for that. And we're going to take a single letter and E is going to crack it. Okay, so Eve takes an E value, which is 65. She raises it to an encryption key of E of a seven and then she takes the mod of that number and this is the result that she actually gets. Okay, you can try it on a calculator. 60, 65 to the power of 7 and then take the mod of that really big number. And then she then uh, announces to the crowd that that's the value and with her little few buttons on the calculator Eve without knowing the decryption key comes up with the value of 65 or the letter E. So E has uh, Eve has done her magic again. Okay, she's managed to crack the code without even knowing the decryption key. So how did she do it? Can you see what she's done there? Well basically uh, the trick is to make N much larger than the message. Could be a very small message value, a single character, to the power of E. If the E is value is small, then M to the power of E is less than N. Okay, so if we look at it, there's a cipher. And really, if we're never going to be greater than this value, then that part doesn't exist. So we end up with C is equal to the message to the power of E. We'll take the logs of both sides, just like John Napier did. And then we get that, and one of the rules of logs is that m to the power of e becomes e times the log of m. So we'll swap them over. Log of m is equal to the log of c, the cipher, divided by e. And so then the message itself is equal to the inverse log of log of the cipher divided by e. We can use any log that we want, so we can use log to the base 10. Our invoice inverse log is is 10 to the power of something. We could use natural logs just like John Napier did. We can do ln and then we can do e at e to the power of x for our inverse log. So let's have a look at this in action here. 
Okay, so there we go. So there's a really big value, big value there, big value of n. So when we take our message of five and our encryption key of seven, the cipher becomes that. That cipher is much less than the value of n. So all we do is we calculate log uh, to the base 10 of the cipher divided by e and then raise that to the power of 10 and that gives us our answer. Okay, so the Python code should be there somewhere. There we go. Okay, so it's 10 to the power of the log to the base 10 of the cipher divided by e and that's that's it. We've cracked RSA. Uh, from from that purely because we've used really big values of of uh, n. Okay, so uh, of n. Yeah. So let's try another one, and we can run that through. So that's for our message there, and it should get there in the end. These are our two prime numbers that we're using in in this case and uh, we should get our, our calculation okay so in this way we can we can actually crack our cipher there we go this came through perfectly now there's our seven there there's our cipher and so on okay so the moral of this is obviously to make sure that we don't take a small message value <laughs> like uh, zero uh, we don't use a small e value and if our prime numbers are very large we've got to make sure that m to the power of e is certainly not less than uh, than the multiplication of the two values okay so again we've managed to to crack rsa when m to the power of e is less than n okay so so that it's there that was 6 to the power of 7 with that value. With that, we took the, the log of C divided by E, then we took the inverse log, and she was able to calculate that the value of was 65. So for our next trick, let's look at some Chinese remainder theorem theory. Okay, and this was a method that was a uh, that was discovered in the second or the third century and it's, it's been around for a long time but it's often used in, in cracking RSA okay so now uh, Eve uh, invites Bob and Alice and Malroy uh, to the stage okay so she asked Bob asked Alice and asked Malroy to be able to create two prime numbers and get a value of n. Okay, so Bob selects two and three, Alice five and seven, and Malroy eleven and thirteen. So they shout out what their values are. Bob gets six, uh, Alice gets thirty-five, and Malroy gets one hundred and forty-three. Okay, so then we'll take an encryption key. We'll just go a very very simple one just now. So then we get each the the will think of a value so we'll say it's five so Eve doesn't see what that value is and then they do their ciphering okay so uh, Bob will write down five Alice will write down 20 and then Malroy will, will uh, write down 125 okay so the value of 5 is secret in this case, we'd need a decryption key to be able to, to get it. But uh, Eve manages to crack it and she announces what the value is. So how did how would she manage to do it? Well, it's all to do with Chinese remainder theorem. Okay, so that takes x mod 3 is equal to 2, x mod 5 is equal to 3, and x mod 7 is equal to 2. What's the value of x that works with that? Well, Chinese remainder theorem allows us to be able to calculate that. So in this case, if we get it to run, then the value of 23 will make that. So 23 mod 3 uh, gives us 2 and so on. So Chinese remainder theorem uh, allows us to be able to calculate that value there. Okay, so and if we look at it, this is what we have. We have uh, different n values there, different ciphers just like that there, but we have a common value 
if uh, if we have a same E value, which is typical in, in RSA, and we have the same message, could be like a reply to to uh, to a, qu a question. If we have the same values there, then we have something that looks like the Chinese remainder theorem. So after we do that, we've calculated so we can get the value of uh, of m to the power of e. And just like before, if we've got uh, the value that we calculate, then we can go around and we can do our logs again, and we end up that the message is the inverse log of the log of e divided by x. So all we really have to do is to be able to use Chinese remainder theorem to work out what the value of the message to the power of e is, and we don't have to bother about the mod n part anymore. The key here is that each one is using its own modulus, but using the same e key, which is does happen with RSA. An e value of one zero 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 one is is common in uh, for the e value. Okay, so there we go, 5, 20, 125, there's the values there. We can then go ahead and solve that, hopefully, if we use our Chinese remainder theorem. And the Python code is there, gives us a value of 125, we'll solve all that. Okay, so there's the there's the algorithm there for the Chinese remainder, th the remainder theory. So we get a value of 125 there. Then we know that uh, that m to the power of the encryption key is 125. We can go ahead and blah blah blah. We do our calculations and we get a value of uh, m equals 5. So that was the way that uh, Eve managed to crack that cipher. And she did it because she asked for three values and each time it was the same message, the same encryption key, but with different n uh, modulus values. So next one, let's move away from asymmetric encryption towards in, at, uh, symmetric encryption. So symmetric encryption, we have something like a 256-bit AES, and what we're going to do is we're going to, cr she's going to crack 256-bit AES uh, no. Okay, so she invites the whole team up to the stage. So this time, this time we're looking at Bob and Alice and Trent and Malaroy and Carol and Chuck. In fact, the whole gang are going to come up on the stage. Now, what she's going to do is she's going to get uh, them to be able to take a word. And what she wants to do is take each letter, and she wants them to be able to uh, generate a 256-bit uh, AES key. And then each one will take a, a letter. So in this case, the secret question is this, what's the capital of Scotland? But Eve doesn't know what that is. So then each of them takes one letter, and then encrypts with this very strong uh, key. Okay, so we take a secret password and then we'll encrypt with 120 uh, SHA 256 bit key, which is the, the hash of the password. Okay, so she asks them each to encrypt each of the letters and then they, they write them all down. And here they are here. Okay, so Bob and Alice have all generated that. So then what Alice is now going to do is that she's going to look at this. She's now going to uh, do some magic with it. And she gives the, it back to Bob. And she asks Bob to be able to decrypt it with the key. And... Uh, and we end up with the right he decrypts it and then he announces the answer is Edinburgh which is correct and that was the question now so how did Eve manage to magically recreate the answer to the question each of the people involved took their own little character 
and then they encrypted and Alice, uh, Eve did a little bit of magic and brought the whole thing back together again. How is that even possible? Well this is how she did it. She used what's called the Ultronic Codebook and she got uh, she got all the team to be able to use ECB. ECB doesn't change at all. Uh, whenever we encrypt we get the same value back. So with ECB all Alice did was to take all the ciphers and to append them together. And then what she did was that she gave that back to Bob and she got Bob to decrypt it. Even though she couldn't actually uh, find out the values herself, she was able to paste them all back together and recreate the original cipher, uh, the, the original answer. Okay, and that's the problem with the electronic codebook, is that it never varies and we can copy and paste, we can bring them all back together. Okay, so here's an example here. We'll take a uh, uh, word of Edinburgh. We'll take a passphrase of, uh, in this case, Foxtrot. And we take each letter and we cipher it with the electronic codebook. So there's the key, some long key, 256 bits. Then what we do, because it's the electronic codebook, and I'll just show you that there. So I'm using the electronic codebook here. Okay, so we then append the whole cipher, we give it back to, to Bob, and Bob decrypts it, and there you go. There's the E, D, I, N, B, U, R, G, H. Okay, so that's the way that it's actually done. So there's a sample run uh, there. And there's a little bit of code that we're using to be able to encrypt and decrypt. Uh, and basically it's all a matter of just being able to paste to paste the whole uh, cipher back again. We're taking uh, each, each of the ciphers back and then we can actually recreate the cipher. Okay, so in this way we can actually crack 256 bits. Yes, well she hasn't really cracked it, but she looks as if she has. So with the Ultronic Codebook, uh, really we have many uh, weaknesses and we shouldn't really use it. If you're interested, we should use CBC, which is Cypher Blockchaining, or some other method. So let's look at a really big uh, hack. So in this one we're going to brute force AES. So with our 256 bit AES, there's no way that we can actually crack uh, that within a reasonable time. It will take us trillions of years to be able to brute force it. But what we'll do is that we'll just do a little trick. Okay, so in this case, uh, Eve asks Bob to back on the stage. And then uh, we take, we let him pick his own uh, his own passphrase, in this case a favourite fruit, uh, and then what we'll get him to do is to hash that value to create his 256-bit key. Okay, so Alice, uh, uh, Eve now has a massive uh, key uh, that Bob's going to use. So then uh, we we're going to encrypt the favourite food with uh, a, a key. So it's going to generate the key from uh, a passphrase that he's, that he's going to use. And then he encrypts the value and this is what he gets. And then Eve thinks for a little minute, she presses a few buttons on her computer and then out pops. Does it grow on trees? Bob says yes. Is it red or green? Bob says yes. Is it an apple? And Bob says yes. So how did uh, Eve crack uh, the AES. How did he, how did, he, how did she uh, do that? Well the way that she did it was that uh, normally we'd have 2 to the power of 256 different keys. But most of the time if we're generating our keys from a passphrase we really decimate the key space. So all that Eve has to do is to think about all the words that Bob is likely to use 
and to generate the 256 bit key uh, for that and uh, should be able to crack it. <laughs> Typically this might only be about a thousand or two thousand words that we have to do. So all we have to do is to think of some common words and uh, then be able to generate the SHA-256 key for that. We then try to decrypt and if it, if it comes out as non-ASCII or it creates an exception then we know the key doesn't work. So we just keep going until we find something that uh, will give us something that looks a little bit like text. So we'll have a look at this. So there you go. So just the words that we're using there are some common phrases there. There we go. We're setting up our passwords here. And what we do is we go round the loop and then we try uh, to decrypt with the different keys. So the key is generated from our passwords and each time we check if it's printable or not and if it is we'll, we'll say it's a contender for the actual key. Okay, So really this is one of the methods that's often used to be able to crack encryption. So if we use, say, if we go for Glasgow here, um, we go for a passphrase of uh, admin. Uh, we'll go around uh, the loop and there we go. So there's the password there. It came up with admin. That's the word. The password gives us this key as 256 bit SHA. Uh, and this is the cipher and we managed to crack it. Okay, and it's one of the big weaknesses of encryption in that we're using a massive key that's uncrackable, but we decimate the key space by making it by generating it from a, a passphrase. If the passphrase is simple, then it's fairly simple to, to break the encryption, even the best of encryption. So now let's look at another one, and this is this is a funky one, this one. So in this case uh, what we've got is that uh, we get Bob and Alice to, to think of two numbers, in this case 5 and 6. And then we get them to cipher with their, with their keys. So this is the encryption key and there's the decryption key. So we get uh, Bob to encrypt that value. So the encryption key is 79, the message is 5, his message is 5. It's around the wrong way there but uh, we get 5 and we get the mod of 3337 three, that gives to 70 and then Alice takes her value 6 and raises it to the encryption key and then takes the mod and she gets 2086 so then uh, Eve takes these two values she thinks a little minute she comes up with a value of 2604 and then she asks uh, Bob and Alice to be able to decrypt that. She doesn't, Eve doesn't know what the decryption key is. So they take the decryption key, which is this one here, and then they decrypt the value that she's given. And as if by magic, she, Eve asks Bob and Alice to reveal the number that they have. And Eve says, I think it will be the multiplication of the two values that you've thought of. What two values did you think of? Five and six, Bob and Alice say. And what result do you get when you deciphered? 30. How did you do that? So how did that, how did that work? How was Eve able to multiply two values together that Bob and Alice had came, came up with and then end up without knowing the decryption key? Well, she did it because RSA is homomorphic uh, when it comes to multiplication. If we took, take our ciphers, we've got one value here, another value, and then if we multiply them together, we get uh, this here. And if we think of John Napier, again, because we have a common, if we have 5 to the power of 3 times 5 to the power of 3, okay, that's equivalent to 5 times 5 to the power of 3. So this is the values here. So when we bring our encryption values together, we can multiply them with uh, ha having the E. 
Okay, so RSA is homomorphic, it's a homomorphic cryptog partial because it does that with uh, multiplication. If you're interested, here is another uh, method. Uh, this is the Paleer homomorphic cryptography system. We can generate a key pair. And the great thing with this encryption, so there is our is our n value here. And the great thing with this is that we can do both addition and multiplication. So we'll take a value of 3 and 4 and then we'll encrypt them. So that's the value of a and b that we get when we encrypt in this crypto this scheme. Then what we can do is we add the two values together. Okay, so we add them together. That's the value that we get when we add that and that. And we can also multiply. So a times b, a plus b times c. So there's the value of c. So what we'll do is we'll calculate that. So that's the value that we get. Okay, so that should be uh, 3, 3 plus 4, which is 7, times 5 is 35. So the encrypted value of that gives us that. When we we operate on them with our crypto, and then when we decrypt, fingers crossed, we'll get 35, and we do. Okay? So this is an example of a homomorphic cryptography uh, system, and we can use that to be able to add and multiply. Okay, so that was a bit of magic <laughs> with crypto. It's a bit of fun, but it actually shows some of the weaknesses that we get with inside our, our crypto system. Okay, so we say thank you to Eve for the tricks and thank you for Bob and Alice for helping out.